Hello, gentles and lady men. I am Bison Gaming. I am joined by Steven. What's up? What's up? And uh, we have a very special game for you today. And it's special because uh, for once, I am not in on the note. This is not one of my games. I'm generally only I generally only cast games to uh, show strategies and, and games uh, app that I forgot to record live and, and want to make a video for. Uh, and, and as such, I'm usually the one who is showcasing surprises to uh, my co-caster rather than the other way around. Steven, you were in this game, and you're playing with my brother, General Spades, and uh, you guys yep. are doing Dutch Germany versus Germany Inca. So, uh, what, what what should I expect from this game, or should, or do you want to leave it as a surprise? Well, yeah, I'll give you some uh, quick a little bit of a heads up of what you're gonna see. You're gonna see a really scrappy game where Spades does a really good job at doing what Dutch does best. And it's a really good example of the sheer danger that Dutch can provide, because uh, a little bit of a spoiler, just heads up, Spades basically 2v1s for a good five minutes. All right, and this this is uh, relevant, especially because uh, Chase is not a Dutch player. He is like, oh. he he is. I think he's playing. He plays Dutch now regularly. I know you played with him earlier today. Did he play Dutch at all? He played, we played exactly one game. He's still trying to figure Dutch out. Yeah. His home city he's, is currently level six. He's relatively not, he's not really known for being a Dutch player. He's like a Japan and Spain guy. Uh, and, and Sweden as well. Excuse me, Japan? I don't play Japan anymore. <laughs> and, and Sweden as well. <laughs> Japan is what I know you for, despite the fact that you haven't played them in forever. Uh, but, um... Yeah, this, this is uh, this is generally like not his territory, and and uh, the fact I I when I learned that he had an epic game with Dutch, and uh, and and is trying to learn new civ, I was like, oh my god, Chase learning a new civilization? Who is this? <laughs> but I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this. Uh, you can see here that the Dut the the Inca explorer is laming my explorer. Indeed. You don't have to watch it. It goes on for about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're gonna we're gonna watch every bit of your embarrassment. All right, uh, let's take take a look at uh, the cards here. We have three vills. Uh, we have Team House of Nassau. Uh, ships one market wagon, exploration age, markets improvements are free. This is a shipment I see occasionally, and it's it's, it's a valuable shipment. Uh, I don't think it's the best shipment in the game, though, and uh, there are better cards out there. Um, it is a valuable age one shipment if you stay in age one a long time and maybe do like a, uh, a, 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 a some sort of trade post start and have a spare shipment and you want to help your teammates out and th th there's something to be said for that. Uh, however, one thing that I would probably recommend uh, to chase in the future uh, would be to run the two cards in age one that increase your bank limit by one each as that, those help you uh, scale into the late game. Uh, later, later, later down the line, should the game go that long, which Dutch is very, very good at making sure the game goes that long. <laughs> uh, but overall, uh, th this is a pretty solid deck. Uh, oh, we also don't see um, the the church card, the unique church card for Dutch, which is something that I would also recommend every Dutch player puts in their deck. And it's uh, th there's another uh, bank limit increase tech in there. Uh, but more importantly, is it's like a timed mercenary shipment where you can send it for free and then pay for the shipment and mercenaries whenever you want. And it's just fantastic. You get uh, like ten, you get ten like strad holders or what are they called? War water gold. I don't know what the fuck they're called Lord Gelders. yeah and uh, in age three and 30 musketeers in age four which is just outstanding uh, so there's a couple cards that are missing here uh i'd probably get re replaced this card with the advanced church uh but it, this is a, a, a it is an acceptable deck and obviously it's an acceptable deck because chase kicks their asses according to according to you guys mm -hmm. <laughs> i actually did play a fair bit of dutch a long time ago um not so much anymore and they've changed quite a bit since then as well uh we see the dutch states army card in here which is awesome 
uh, enables Highlanders in barracks, Royal Horsemen in stables, and both in taverns. Very cool card. Uh, but yeah, all right, you should talk a little bit now, Steven. This is your game, after all. Yeah, so pretty standard opening for me from Germany. Nothing crazy. Market into two. And this is my two. This is my like two v two land deck that I typically run. It's not the general meta, but I like the lawn fair a lot. So in there. Yay. <laughs> yeah, land, wear, land wears are very very fun units. Oh, there's something else I want to check in the Dutch deck. Uh, we also don't see tulip speculation. Oh man, there's a lot of core Dutch cards in here that are missing. I didn't even notice. Uh, I need to play Dutch again because they're because I see a lot of their new cards in here, and it would be fun to test these out. Uh, when, when they, well, we're waiting I think on I'll, I think I'll play, yeah. video to tell us about the Belgian Revolution. Yeah, I've heard that the Belgian Revolution is apparently really really good. Yeah, It'll be a, a little fun bit of rating and counter rating. Uh, enemy Germany player. Uh, oh, this is you. <laughs> You're still looking at me, yeah. Uh, enemy Germany player is. Uh, he went with a, the. Oh, he went with the logistician. He went logi, yeah. So he's getting three Ulans uh, on all of his H2 shipments, and he ships Palantine settlements. Very interesting start. I don't actually see a stable up from him anywhere. So he's he's yeah. using the logistician essentially to just be extra aggressive in in age in in age two without actually investing in military, which is kind of cool. It's a neat idea. Yeah, he's using logi here to do an FF. Which is weird, but I actually kind of see the logic behind it. It kind of makes sense when you think about that. And I, uh, I do believe that you get, you do not get a free tech with Germany's logistician, correct? You do not. You get, you get the extra Ulan per shipment for your age one and age two. You get the arsenal. The value of logi is insane and if you go past three ish four shipments in age two but it's if you're not sticking out in age two it's not typically considered to be a good card or a good age up yeah but, like this the the germany yeah. it's so funny because the germany logistician value wise is like so much better than Spain's logistician, and yet Spain's logistician is the far more famous of the two. Uh, and it's because, you know, even though Ulans are only 150 resources, you're only getting 150 extra resources per shipment, uh, as opposed to Spain, where you get, like, 300. Um, Spain is using that to increase the age one shipment value, which means you're still only getting 600 resources if you send the 300 crates, uh, which is cool. Yeah. And it is split really, really nicely, and they do go straight to your convoy. Um, but having 600 resource repeatable over all of your age two shipments suddenly being worth 850 is quite a bit different, you know? Yeah. Pretty much. And remember, you Germany, it's actually more like a thousand res in H2 because you have the normal 700 plus the two lines you always get. Exactly. So it's, it's more like an increase. Germ it's part of what makes Germany so, so insanely good at tempo. Yeah. Because but, take, so take, instead, their it's more like take their yeah. 700 coin shipment here, for for example. Uh, th with three Ulans, this is suddenly worth 1,150 resources. So incredibly mm -hmm. valuable. Uh, and then to yeah. briefly touch on Inca, I mean, I, I already touched, I, I, I already just released a video yesterday on Inca by the time this one releases. So I'm not, I'm not going to go too in into depth here, but. Uh, yeah, there you go. There, there's the Inca deck. Now let's go back. To, let's go back to Dutch because I, I, that's the main star of the show. This game, if I'm not mistaken, Dutch is the main star of the show. We got three banks up by by my counts. Uh, we got the barracks up. Has he trained any units? What units is, is going on here? He's aging up to three. Uh, he had to have trained units. Okay, he's, he's made mostly pikes by the looks of it. Uh, we've yeah. sent 700 wood and four villagers and the bank wagon. Uh, yep, that looks pretty standard. With with uh, Dutch, you generally send 700 wood first and use it to build two banks, and quickly follow it with the bank wagon for a third and uh, and, and and go about it that way. When 
I think that's what's happened here. And by then you have enough coin generation that you don't really need 700 coin uh, in order to go in order to age up. We see a stable going up, so I'm sure we're uh, going to see some skirmisher Reuters. Uh, he aged up with looks like the exiled prince for a fast age up. Uh, and now we're going to see Dutch in full swing here. I'd like to see more banks up by now, uh, but it is what it is. You know, he's probably just going to end up getting more banks up by buying the wood, in all honesty. Uh, Dutch are not super great at chopping, despite the fact that they need so much of that wood. <laughs> well, it's part of the balance, you know? Most of the games in this... Most of the sips in this game are balanced. Mm -hmm. Except Ottomans. <laughs> do I do I detect a little bit of salt, Stephen? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we're shipping nine Reuters and training skirmishers. Very, very nice. I often see Dutch players focus entirely on skirmishers for their economy in, in early age three, and ship nine and eight Reuters back to back. Usually, that's that's usually the go-to since Dutch do not have uh, the two Falconet card. And they're still good at fast fortresses, so it tells you a lot about them, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. But it's really just because of how insanely strong the Dutch interaction with banks is. Oh, yeah, their whole civilization is so, so surrounded. So strong. Like, yeah, yeah, the, the, the Reuter costs 75 fucking coin. Like, this would not be mm -hmm. viable in any other civilization. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see if we send probably a, uh, my guess is he's going to send a thousand wood yep that's uh, going to build probably two TCs with that or uh, fill up his base with banks one of the two uh, I generally don't bother building a second TC as Dutch because their 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 settler build limit is so low like you don't need us the, no. the fuck do you need TCs for he's already two thirds of the way to his settler cap and we're 11 minutes in on one TC <laughs> you know <laughs> Like it doesn't matter. You don't. You don't need a second TC. Uh, but the banks do cost a lot of food and a lot of wood. And I see he's got a lot of food and he's about to have a lot of wood. So uh, that, that's what I'm guessing is about to happen here. As the woods arrived and he's just going to build banks. Build limit of five. So he's probably going to cap those out here. All right, we go into the first combat. Inca has jungle bowmen. Uh, there is also a fair amount of veteran Ulans. Ooh, that's that's not something you want to fight. They got a lot of attack right there. And I know he, I know he also sensed the Ulan, the, the the Germany like a combat too. I know he's already sensed the team cavalry attack card as well. So those Ulans yeah. are uh, very strong. Look at that forty nine attack, man. Yeah, so there's a lot of cav on the field from their opponents here right now. Right? And got speaking, Chino, there Ulans. are nine black riders on the field. That's going to be and uh, scary. And as we feel in this this uh, battle here, these are the new black riders. These are the buffed black riders. Only in melee, but yes. Now we feel it. <laughs> I mean, unless they... they, I don't think they're going to go into melee mode, so... Unless that happens, you know. I would say, no, you are not feeling it. You're just feeling Black Riders. Black, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Black Riders are just good. Feeling Black Riders, and that, that shipment comes in so clutch for them oh, here. Oh, yeah. Black, the, I'm generally of the opinion that Black Riders are not the best mercenaries in the game. However, the Black Rider shipment for Germany is incredible uh, because they get so many of them because of the German civilization bonus where they get extra mercenaries. And so just with that, like, basically we were in a really good spot, and then that shipment came in, and we are essentially, like, I am wiped, and Dutch here at this point is, you know, he's, Spades has pulled out a fairly decent mass, but... Oh, the stats of... We're, we're licking our wounds. The stats of Pikemen depress me. Yeah. Uh, what's being sent here? Um, where, where is the shipment coming from? I don't... Oh, this one right here, Nassau Regiments. Uh, musket arms blue guards from the and enables them in forts. Ah, cool. All right, this is this is the only way that Dutch get like musketeers. That's Muskets. right. Yep. And I, I find it very funny. Uh, I 
I know Chase is still in this chat, probably. Uh, I would recommend that if you have this card in your deck, you also put any forts in your deck. Well, don't worry. You're gonna see some. You're gonna see some turn. Okay. Do you, does he? Wait, where does he get a fort? Oh, an H four uh, with with the water station. You'll see. <laughs> okay. Because it says it just enables them in forts, and there's no fort card. It does. Huh? But yeah, and so here I'm. Uh, they are throwing themselves onto me here, and at this point, you're gonna see some really, really bad luck with the way the, my villager AI decided to behave. But so we're here. We're just trying to fight off this mass, and here uh -oh. comes Inca. That's not a good feeling. Nope. And this um, is after it's an intercepted uh, batch of coral wagons that were coming in. The stats of pikemen depress me. They're so bad. Yeah, and at this point, I'm going like, like we are in severe trouble. Yeah, there's still a fair amount of black riders on the field. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Here's those idiot vills who decided to walk literally oh. through, through the fight, and I catch okay, it, and it's like, no, you. <laughs> Oh, they're, most of them will. <laughs> oh, oh they, they burned down your TC, of course. Yeah, because look how thoroughly we've been knocked out. Yeah. And so at this point, it's literally... I, I just spell tell space yeah, at this oh, point. Yeah, oh, there it is. Like, Logisticians. Yeah, there that, it is. That's there's how it's getting this for. I'd still recommend having a fort card in H3, though. Maybe replace advanced artillery, because nobody needs advanced artillery. Uh, False. Uh, uh, mortars counter... Um, um, Avis. Avis guns for Dutch. No. Yeah, I, I get a few out from the Villa X. But no, this, this deck has been modified a little bit. It's better now. <laughs> Did you get rid of these two and replace them with the Dutch build, the, the bank build limits? There's, there's been a lot of modifications. <laughs> Was that one of them though? <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. So funny how comparable war wagons are to black riders and stats. This is actually mm -hmm. one of the reasons I really don't like black riders. Is they're basically just war wagons, and if you're fighting a Germany player, he's gonna be like, "Black riders? Okay, let me just train those." You know. Yeah. So at this point, we have just abandoned my base entirely. Yeah. I see. Literally, like there is no salvation. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, and he, he gets a cheeky uh, raid or two right oh, here. Oh no! Oh, look how many war settler wagons there are here! Yeah, yeah. I actually don't really mind Ulan raids too much because Ulans are so flimsy that you can actually kind of play, deal with Ulans with your settlers. You just put them all in yep. melee, and and the, the Ulans will die before they can kill more than like two of your settlers. It's very entertaining, actually. Yeah. I think Hussars yeah, are so much whole... much more dangerous raiders than than. Yeah, Ulans. just from a uh, from a health perspective. See, at this point, this base here, all of these HP exist only to buy you time and for nothing else. Exactly. And Chase is age four. Uh, we don't see any upgrades going up just yet. Just got the first factory up, shipping the seconds already. Uh, against this, I probably would have been... Uh, against this right here, I probably would have been tempted just to ship 17 Reuters, but uh, going with the, the factories is probably a smarter idea. Uh, getting... Oh, only just... Okay, getting the fifth bank up Finally, here we go. Uh, here we go. Build limit five out of five. Uh, no real way to raise the bank limit, which is something that I, I've already talked about in the deck. So, uh, it, it's something that needs needs improving in the deck. But uh, there we go. The Swiss pikemen are fantastic shipments. I hope we get to see those a little bit. Uh, as are the Habsburg allies. The mounted infantry are just stupidly good. Uh, and now it's time for the two-on-one, because they are closing in. 
They're closing in, and I've deliberately kind of bunched up here to try to, you know, throw some skirms into this. And it doesn't do much. <laughs> no, not really. But you got the land wares, and they are very, very solid. 24 attack is nothing to scoff at. Mm. It's nothing to scoff at, but I just don't have enough mass to be able to stop this. And there's Chimu in there and Oolongs. Look up to the north as well. Yep. Yeah, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's getting wiped, yeah. but yeah, at the same point. At the same point, Ooh, that's not what you want space to is use. getting hit here. Just all around rough, but we got the skirmishers on the Jaegers as well. Jaegers are dangerous because if you have them it just mixed into skirmishers, they can just one-shot Calv. Uh, but as soon as they, they've lost enough of their mass that they can't one-shot things, then there's no point to the Jaegers anymore. And they're basically just skirts. Ooh, these Chimas are closing in. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the whole Reuter mass has been white. I definitely recommend staying clear of those. But it looks like this battle is going to go in our favor due to the Jaegers just not having enough of them anymore. And these war wagons are clearly fighting the wrong unit. Uh, so hopefully we'll see, we'll see a little bit more coverage here now as Fred's second TC goes down. Ooh, this is not not ideal. <laughs> no, that's actually his third TC that's going down. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh, geez. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, and you know by here Delch is pretty much in full swing I mean we only have five banks out but he's got both his factories he's almost capped in settlers he's got the last of his settlers he needs queued um, and and he's capped in banks so like this is as good as the Dutch eco gets you know he's in full swing and if they can and you, and you guys know this and so does your enemy by this point as well yes and this is why I say, like, you never need more than one TC as Dutch. If you can keep it alive for 20 minutes, you're fine. I did make a second with that thousand wood, by the way. Ah, uh, where'd it go? Where is it? It exists. It's up to the north. There it is. Uh, there's more important things to look at. <laughs> Like this yeah, Chimu mass right, that's starting right, to burn right, down right. the wrong building. What the fuck? Why are they burning down the barracks? There's a factory right there! Uh, this... Yeah, they're not okay, doing they're, any damage yeah, to that they're, fort. They're, they're, burning, they're burning completely useless things here. They are wasting their time. There is so many better things they could be doing with their units right now than sacrificing five units at a time versus a fort and burning houses and walls that don't matter. As well as a barracks with, that's right next to a factory. Like, I, I do not understand the logic here. I don't know, but if you're the opponents, you have to feel pretty confident here. I mean, I guess... It's not like you sent Palantine Settlement and losing a house is, like, a catastrophe. <laughs> but yeah, so with the fort and spades as push, like, on the clearing up the Jaegers, like, spades has actually pushed them back, both of them back. So, like, I contributed yeah, just... nothing to that defense. Yeah, they, they've at this point just run out of steam. Yeah. And hey, we see Halberdiers. I love Dutch Helms. I think they are a criminally underused unit. Some food yet in sense, is that so you can start training some settlers? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I see you're just pretty much all focused on wood here. I might, I was about to say, I might recommend making a dock and look, look what you got up. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> uh, the, the, yeah, in a pinch, docks can be very, very helpful in, in recovering financially. Oh, these, these helps are going to die. Oh, he got one swing off on the U1. <laughs> <laughs> God, halberdiers are so good. 
All your settlers join the rebellious Flemish uh, militia and turn into halberdiers. You can give so many buffs to halberdiers as well. Like, this is... I, I can see where somebody is coming from where this card is potentially, like, really good. And then all of your halberdiers, pikemen, Roy and reuters pick up muskets and turn into revolutionaries. That's stupid. Nobody should ever send this card. Here, sacrifice all of your economy, assuming you did the Flemish Revolution first. Sacrifice all of your best units and turn them into, like, a really, really shitty unit in Age 4. Like, what the fuck? So there's a couple Chimu there that had not gone into stealth, but were hiding at the very edge of the map. Well, they can't go in stealth, because not Age 4. That's what, that's what we were trying to figure out. It's like because he, they were hiding at the edge of the map in the gray zone, so you couldn't actually see them. It's hilarious if it weren't for the fact that it killed units. See, if you're, I wish Mexico's card that allows forts to fire at buildings was not in Age Five, where it's useless by that point, because that would be a fantastic Age Three card, right? You send a fort, you send the card that allows your fort to target its buildings, and then you attack your opponent's forward base, sacrifice your whole military, and get a fort right up in the middle of their forward base and just burn their base to the ground. You know, I, I really so wish that was the case. Push here. We're making a bit of a push. Skirms and Reuters. And, and please, please note that uh, our opponents are both age four, and Stephen is still age three. Oh yeah, yeah was, I'm, I'm stuck in three. God, look and the only reason I have, oh, the only reason I have that many land there is because how much wood I had collected when my base was getting burned down. <laughs> oh, we got more Chimu There's, runners here. We got, we got a lot yeah. of Chimu runners, and oh my, there's just it, this is just okay. This is I feel. This Inca player has, like, USA Syndrome, where USA has so many different types of ranged infantry, you just glob them all together. I feel like this Inca player is doing the same thing, where he has USA Syndrome, where he's just like, I have so many different types of units, it's a pain to manage them all, I'm just gonna put them all in a big glob. <laughs> yeah, so How make, do you keep an eye on here? Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> it's too much math for me. Many, many, many units. He's got units. a lot of units. And so I'm basically just trying to stick my army between to distract Anka here while Spades deals with Germany. God, look at and that model. And he does model. a great, like... Look at that model. Oh. But Spades gets the phallics cleaned up. He gets all this cleaned up. That's the kind of model. Th th that's thanks to this new patch that these guys have this model. This is the kind of halberdier model that just makes a, an Age of Empires player horny as hell. Yeah, and at this point, I'm thinking like, hey, I'm getting a wipe. I gotta pull back. And Spades is like, nope, I'm winning up here. I'm, I'm okay. It's like, I look over, it's like, holy crap, you yeah, it's are. all dead. <laughs> Blue's all dead. All dead. By this point, we do have the Carboneer, Reuter, and Guard Skirmishers. He's got guard upgrades on everything by this point. <laughs> Just take a look at the scores right now. Just to give an understanding of like how strong Spades is at this right at, right now. Hey, hey I see a four actually, stealth. That's awesome. We somehow have somehow have a score lead over the opponents, despite the fact that I am significantly below everyone. <laughs> and it's just Spades and the power of Dutch here. I wish Cloud Fortresses was still good. It's such a shit card now. <sighs> Stealth war huts and forts was such a cool concept. <laughs> and hey, we do see the Swiss pikes. Oh, I my love. I love Swiss pikes so much. They're like one of my favorite mercs. Yeah, 
And now everybody's getting pushed back. I didn't realize how long this game was. Oh, yeah. I think it's 40, 45 minutes. Alright, by this point, yeah. A lot of things have been sent here. I would like to build a build around the Flemish Revolution. It seems kind of expensive, but halberdiers are really good, especially for Dutch, so there might be something yeah. there. I think one of my misgivings about it is generally when you revolt and you turn all of your settlers into units, you know, you like that big, meaty, like 90 unit mass, you know, and you just don't get that with Dutch because their build limit is 50. Which is somewhat depressing. God, Dutch is so funny. He has, like, very small amounts of settlers on each resource and is just tanking the economy. Mm -hmm. it's just just tanking economy wise it's just like oh you built you destroyed my army who gives a shit i can afford three more dutch life am i right mm-hmm he's on five banks two factories and doesn't care <laughs> how many how many falconets we got here three that's not bad they're not really going to be helpful here because it's all cav but you know That'll change once you get closer to Inca. Yeah. Is that a priest? Why? Duh. A little pocket of Eight mace, man. God, look at that 62 hand attack at two and a half area of effect. What a monster. Only two pop now as well. Mace have really been like buffed to shit. What a crazy unit. They're still not the most ideal thing to send in the universe, but like if if used right, they can they can result in some pretty hilarious shenanigans. And now we got the mounted infantry. The Hapsburg, yep. And this curious forward plantation there. Or estate, I should say. Well, you mean you don't like... You you mean you guys don't use a 600 wood scout that can't shoot anything back? Why not? Yeah. I, I thought that was pretty standard, you know? Yeah. So I'd like to just do a stock take here. So Spade, fully... He's pop-capped fully bone. And compare that to the other people in the rotation here. 64 bills from Inca with lots of conja houses, full conja. Yeah, room. he's fully conja. So he's, he's got a pretty impressive eco himself right now. Yeah. Uh, he's also sent the Chincha Brewing card. He has not sent the wood card though. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't even have it in the deck. That's like one of Inca's best cards. Uh, over here we have 57 bills. Ooh. Yeah, this is where Germany runs out of steam. Is like late industrial, you know. The, yeah. the, this is this is where Ger it's it's bad to be a Germany player, is when they lose their tempo and run out of steam. Uh, but he's he's early on into age four. He's only got one of his factories though. But Chase has had both of his factories for so long at this point. Mm -hmm. So long. So, he's just knocked down Germany's starting TP. And you just have to watch how what he does here. Yeah. Like, Inga's coming up behind him. I'm still in recovery mode. I'm still not even in four. I'm still no, not even in four here. To give that understanding. And, you know, he's this just knocked down Germany's first TP. Sandwiched in. Yeah. And I tell him, hey, try to get that factory. Do you think he gets the factory? I'm assuming yes, because you asked me that question, and I'm metagaming here. It does, here. but if you're looking at this, and if you're looking at this, do you think he gets the factory? Oh right no, now? It, it looks like such a bad situation. Yeah, like he's just, just he's lost like all. all of his calf, like from these guys. Why yeah, am I? Why is my sound bug? Have you guys noticed that? Like it's really quiet. No. But look at this! Like, despite that huge, I'm, I, I'm just like, we're just gonna, we're just gonna get the halbs. 
and the Swiss Pikes on the factory and just sacrifice everything. I'm not even looking at the fa the battle anymore. Like I'm like, all right, we're just gonna distract. We're gonna put my Reuters and my Skirms on the Jungle Bowmen and the Halbs and the Swiss Pikes on the factory and pray and try and remass. That that's what happened. Like I'm not wasn't even looking at that fight anymore. Yeah. Well, it, it works. Still, it, just went down. it worked. I am shocked, but it totally works. What a, what a goofy card. I want to try that at some point. <laughs> As soon, when, whenever Dutch become free on the sub rotation, I'll make a ton of videos about it. <laughs> <laughs> And back down we go. Oh my god, look at this base. Look at this base. It's, it's so dense. Mm -hmm. Pillarless walls, you're disgusting. <laughs> I know, who am I? Walling up and stuff? Bades doesn't wall. I know, right? That's generally my attitude, too. I'm like, I don't fucking wall. I use a goofy strategy and win at 10 minutes. <laughs> so this is another, like, significant push. Mm -hmm. Because we had just been wired, and very, like, very I'm still trying to remass. Huge amounts of troops. I, I think his armies yeah. don't have a lot of focus, though. A lot of them feel just like random globs. There, there's generally not, like, a... Uh, not like a focus of units. The dance of the falconets. Like he needs, he needs to focus like pretty much way more on jungle bowmen than any other unit here. I'm just realizing how bad the falc pathing is right now. What yeah, I mean, just look at them dance around. <laughs> Does it really matter when you have that many of them though? Uh, well, I had like eight, and now I've and got like lost three. Like three of them. <laughs> yeah. I've got two falconets left! I had like six or eight! I have three. They're doing this bizarre spin to win situation. Where are the where are the two on the north going? What the fuck? <laughs> hey, they were they were really, really after these these champion Shimu runners, let me tell ya, bro. Is is they if the guy is using cloud fortresses but not cloud warriors, he is. He's got cloud fortresses in his deck, but not cloud warriors. How how disappointing. <laughs> So I have just hit four. I think Spades I sent you resources too, didn't I? You for did it? send me res to get to four. <laughs> Spades has been in four for like 20 minutes at this point. Like 20, 25 minutes. Steven, you're on 88 vils. Oh, it's boats, right? It's boats. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah so like yeah, Spades Steven's like fully back in this game now. Look at the score difference by now. Like, what, they, what can they do? Not much. Not much. Not much indeed. Do you hit age five before the end of the game? I don't remember. I think so. Did you click up to age five at any point in the game? Again, I don't remember. Okay. Have to see oh, I see. Thing. I see a glob here. Oh, that's walls. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so really quiet. I feel like my sound is bugged. It's really weird. I'm not the <laughs> only one who feels that, right? Like my I mean, watching a Discord bugged. stream, the, the the Discord stream's quiet, but there's like no gunshots. There's like a gunshot every two seconds. Yeah, I don't know. That space is training Swiss pikes right now, and man. Ooh, Swiss a pikes, man after Falcon my own heart. Where'd you get the Swiss Pikes trainable from? Oh, I didn't know that, that allowed. Oh, that, that's one of their other new cards. I forgot about that. Are, mm -hmm. the, Swiss, are the Swiss Pikes trainable in age two? Because they're normally in age three pike. Uh, yeah. They're trainable in age two? Oh my god, I need to make a strategy around that. I love Swiss Pikes so much. Getting them age two trainable? Like, are you fucking kidding me? I think yeah. so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a strategy right. around that. You can bet your ass.
Man, where's our but so yeah, cool? there's just there's just uh the the Inca guys just keeps on throwing units at us. Yeah. And like trading pretty well and 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 we're just trying to figure out the best way to end the game. Here. He's he's finally figured out that he needs more jungle bowmen, I see, which is which is good to see on the Inca players part. Not really great for you guys, but uh Yeah, jungle bowmen are the right answer here. So if you uh, look down to the south, keep going. Oh, <laughs> that's 19 Swiss bikes. <laughs> we know his mass is up in the north, so we figured uh, yeah, we might as well push him because he's probably defenseless. One of the things I do feel like is is like Swiss Pikes for Dutch. Swiss Pikes are great as the H3 shipment, right? Uh, and they're really fast, which is nice too. But, and I, it is with a heavy hand, heart that I say this, I feel like in H3 onwards, stat-wise, Halberdiers are the better unit. And I do love Swiss Pikes, um, but I feel like the Halberdiers just are just so good with such a high base attack. Unless you are fighting somebody who is making nothing but heavy gav, like generally the halberdiers are going to be the better pick, except for H2. In H2, Dutch has kind of the op the option to go with halberdiers or Swiss pikes, and uh, I, I do feel like at that point the Swiss pikes would probably be the better option. So while this is going on, I would like to point up north, at the very north, what do I have there? Oh, are you gonna make a dock and make a bunch of warships along the coastline? He mostly made it to uh, get the eco, the fishing eco. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is oh you did click update five. This is the part, Stephen, where where you want to ship a battleship like right fucking here. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, 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 I'm gonna give a heads up. You're gonna see a rather cathartic moment there. So again, we got wiped because Jungle Bowman. Because Jungle Bowman. And some Haraka mixed in as well. But at this point, yeah, Steven's fully boomed back in. We've we're like walled and turtled and and fully on mills and everything. And uh, now we've got an age advantage again. Indeed. There's our age advantage. And what did you age up with? You, I'm looking for some kind of shipment somewhere. I don't remember what I aged up with. So the guys up north have discovered the sneak dock. Oh, line infantry. That's probably what oh, it was. Yeah. yeah, that's it. But it, it, this, it, it's, uh, this is a really fun Swap moment. Swap over to Steven's perspective. Yeah. Right. Look at what I've got popping. Yeah, the, the caravels. Oh, and a monitor. Nope. Oh no! Do a monitor? <laughs> just watch, just watch. What's what I go for? What did I just kill? Oh! <laughs> a factory! Oh, he was just shy! Yep. Oh, that's beautiful! God, look at that 1,000 mortar damage to buildings. Like, what the fuck? This is a crazy unit. Oh, you, so you love to see that, though. <laughs> yep. <laughs> meanwhile, you know, we're finally pushing in down here. And I'm 7 falcing their ass. <laughs> while all this oh, is that's, a, that's a plantation gone. Yeah, this is what you want to do. You want to target the plantations and mills because it stalls out their ego and people will usually run out of wood before they can rebuild everything if you burn down enough of them because plantations are so expensive. Oh, and you're sending warship attack, too? Oh, yeah. Or sorry, no, you're upgrading the warship attack from the dock. I want to see this. 
Oh, oh, that's so disgusting. I just got a <laughs> frigate too. Yeah, there's there's no there's no longer any stopping this torrent. Yeah, this no. this is the classic chase seven falc. You know? <laughs> there's that I like that that's not changed. You no, know, you still love to seven falc. You just you still love to make huge masses of artillery. Why not? Why not? Because of this. I think I'm worried about Chimu runners. They I've got a, seven falconets. They have a multiplayer against <laughs> artillery. I've got seven of them. <laughs> That's seven, yeah. <laughs> and now you have three of them. Huh? And how many yeah, Chimu does he have? And how many yeah, Chimu does he have? Still, that was Zero. A, he destroyed all seven of your falconets. Oh, he destroyed six or seven falconets for like ten Chimu. That's so cheap. That's so worth it. Yeah, and how many falconets do I actually have? I have no clue. Your, your army is like spread everywhere. I don't even know where your artillery is. I don't. I'm my only. I may only have one. <laughs> <laughs> but one is still better than zero. It's true. And there the game is called. Especially when you win the game. Well, that was fun. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for watching, Gentles and Lady. This is a fun game. And uh, I, I, I hope you've adjusted your deck after this. Yeah, it's been adjusted. <laughs> but it's good. It's good. All right. See you later, everybody, and goodbye. <laughs>